and thanks everybody. Um, yep, Zoom has been a, a tough friend this week, but we're excited to have you for our third uh, webinar series on um, the Cloverbed project. So my name is Amy Colura. Um, I am an, a 4-H extension agent, uh, for, sorry, 4-H extension educator with the 4-H uh, Youth Development Program in Hennepin County and my colleague Catherine Wynn as well. Do you want to introduce yourself too, Catherine? Hi everyone, my name is Catherine. I'm another ex uh, local extension educator. I work at Eden Prairie office with Amy. Yay, well, yep, and we're on week seven working remotely from our home offices. So we're excited to keep 4-H going and open for business for you all. Um, I th uh, Sarissa, do you want to have uh, introduce yourself as well? Uh, Sarissa Stockton and I am a uh, club leader for the Crystal Creators and we have been working on with the club for three years I want to say now. Mm -hmm. um, think so. We, yeah, we mostly focus on Clover Bud age and we recently had two members graduate up into the actual 4-H, um, the normal age range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Um, and we should have another 4-H youth joining us uh, named Evelyn. She's one of our 4-H ambassadors um, and she can give us kind of her gra more graduated, um, older take on the 4-H program. So all you and your young younger kiddos can get excited about what's ahead in your 4-H career. Um, so this webinar series, we this is our third and um, we don't have any um, May topics yet. So we're excited to hear from you um, for this webinar series happening Wednesday evenings. But this was really to keep 4-H going, to keep your hands-on project learning opportunities relevant and engaging during the current and many unknowns during this time. Um, we want your learning at home to be um, just really supported from, from our program. We also wanted to establish and keep this welcoming and supportive environment that 4-H has, connect you to not only staff, but maybe other peers of uh, for your kiddos, as well as um, maybe other parents or volunteers that can connect you to resources. And just really get, get them all excited about um, what 4-H is all about in, in their learning and get them excited for what's ahead. Um, we're still in a bit of the unknown for showcasing events. Um, our county fair has um, been postponed. It was scheduled for mid-June and just based on extension programs, um, in-person programs being canceled through the end of June. We're kind of waiting on that next next governor's update um, to really start um, to really have a better grip on what's ahead for us this summer. But we do plan to have some kind of showcasing event achievement day um, We'd love to have it in person, of course, but if if we're um, if we're unable, we'll um, we'll find something that makes um, that makes sense and uh, works for all of us. And of course, we're here to address your many questions. 4-H is deep and wide, so we're here for you. Um, for those of you maybe just jumping on um, and jumping into 4-H, um, we'd love to tell you 4-H is the largest youth serving organization in the U.S. It serves all genders ages 5 to 19 or grades K through one year past high school and we're built on like experiential learning um, that is like project-based learning where youth can explore and self-guide their interests, learn by doing, um, learn and apply these like transferable skills in their project learning to to the larger things. And all the while, whether you're a clover bud in grades kindergarten, first or second grade, or third and beyond in your 4-H career, you're connected with a caring adult that's, whether your parent, your club leader, staff, um, other project project folks, and just um, just really guided in, in that learning and challenged and asked about how, how, like what your learning is applying and being generalized to to your, the greater pieces of life. And Catherine and I have a particular love um, for our younger age groups. Um, we love Clover Buds. Again, this is our group, um, our youth who are ages five through seven, kindergarten, first and second graders. This program is really special because it's built on being um, age appropriate, building self-esteem, um, allowing these Clover Buds to discover possibilities, experience new skills, um, try new things, um, and then in your 
like learning and showcasing opportunities, we want um, we want them to be developmentally appropriate. So we focus more on that cooperative learning piece, whether it's an individual project or a group project. Um, we're not necessarily building on that competitive piece yet. So um, in your showcasing, there's just one participation ribbon that's green for our clover buds. Um, and really it's just to celebrate their courage to speak with a judge that might feel kind of scary, but know that they're just really excited to hear about your learning, not to, not to stump you or make you feel bad or anything. They're there to just really encourage you and, and make you feel really accomplished. So that's a really fun part about this program. Um, What's different about, and I guess by different, we mean like more specialized within this Cloverbud project, is that we really do focus these age groups to have that developmental and age appropriate lessons and um, like curricula available and other um, aspects of learning. And like all 4-Hers, your project learning can happen as a group project with your club, at home, on your farm, um, or on your farm, um, within your 4-H club, at school, something you make, or a place you go on a trip, or maybe in your community of faith. Another um, very important aspect of the Cloverbud project is that encouragement and guidance from parents and caring adults. We want you to be involved um, with every step that they take in their Cloverbud project, but maybe at a like trusted distance too, to make sure they can get a little messy, they can get, um, you know, make a few mistakes and learn from those too without, um, without overstepping too much. Um, and though we know um, you may have your own rules and, and things available for your child at home, whether it's livestock or really cool power tools to help teach them sewing machines, things like that, um, just based through our like risk management policies, we do have some unique safety guidelines for our clover buds at meetings and events. And this is really, it's not to inhibit, um, it's just to ensure that everyone involved has a high quality and safe experience. Um, you'll see this in our like supervision ratios when we have clover bud events. We just ask for a few more adults present with those youth. Um, and other things too, like when it comes to sewing machines, power tools, livestock, there are just a few additional um, rules in that um, just adults have to be handling those type of equipment or animals and um, be the re like responsible person and in control of those pieces. Um, and we can go into those risk management pieces as, as any questions pop up. Um, and I'll pass this over to Catherine, who's going to tell you some exciting things you can get going on in the Cloverbud project. All right, so Cloverbud projects, a wide variety of things that Cloverbuds are welcome to do. But the first place you should start with is, what topics and what passions are they really interested in? If it's slime, go ahead and do it. If it's STEM, go for it. If it's flowers, let's do it. But the point of it is to make sure you have set goals for it, make sure to have developmental lesson plans in a way lesson plans are just steps on how to go from drawing a flower to experimenting and dissecting a flower to how do we grow a flower and what's the life cycle of a flower those different steps to make sure a youth your young person your little clover bud has a learning process to understand more from 2d and all the way to 3d to actually growing and caring for it um, then after that when you're trying to take your clover bud to a fair they can put it on display take pictures of them doing this uh, make sure you ask them questions like what do you really like about this project what have you learned today what could you do differently or how would you want to share this project with your grandma or your sister or your older brother? Questions like that help them think critically and think more of, wow, why do I like this project? Besides, someone told me to do it and I told, I just chose this project to do. All right, next. <clears throat> All right, so some project ideas that we do have is, like I said, planting a flower, right? A seed that you planted and you cared for. Flowers can grow and bloom and now you can enjoy them in a vase or even send flowers to a community center as part of a service project as well to those who are in nursing homes or residential homes. Another project idea is taking a book they read and making a puppet or a character come to life with materials they have lying around home. So this one's based off of where the wild things are and making little puppets out of the 
school brown lunch bags and make them colorful and making their own type of monster. If they wanted to, they can even have this become evolved from an arts and crafts project to a performing arts project, becoming more of a puppetry type of feel too. So a project area can become can actually dabble in a lot of different um, areas. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, insects. Who doesn't love insects? Learning about insects and learning not to scare them and that they are our friends and they're here for a reason. <laughs> learning anywhere from outside in the dirt when one of the times you're actually gonna tell your kids, yes, go ahead, dig in the dirt. Just make sure to wash your hands after you're done. Right? Open a book and understanding what did you find out there? Are these mites or are these springtails? Or maybe they're just worms. Not quite sure yet, but a really great way to actually dive in and do that hands-on experience instead of just reading from a book and then getting that life visual of what in the world is that um, in my hands. This girl has an actual worm. We were exploring worms that day. All right, and then of course, Clover buds and animal science. And when we say animal science, we also talk about pet projects where if they have a dog, a cat, a rabbit, a pet snake, they can definitely do a project on that, do a trifold and tell us what they feed it, how they take care of it, how often they need to change their bedding or their tank, so on and so forth. But there's also animals like in the dog project, the horse project, rabbit, goat, they have more of a tailored project area to it, where there are dog exercises and trainings. As they get older, they'll be able to do things like agility, where they can t train the dog to jump over hurdles, go through barrels, not barrels, but cones for agility, and horses where you will have to walk around a barrel, do figure eights, and so on. But for ages five through seven, it's a lot more guided. It's being able to be comfortable and showing off that I know how to take care of my dog, I can hold a leash, I know how to put on the collar, I know how to walk confidently next to my animal. That's for dogs and for rabbits too. Rabbits have leashes, by the way. And for horses, it's being able to feel comfortable on how do I sit on my horse, how do I get on the horse, and do I feel nervous when my parent or a responsible adult is leading the horse down a straight line. For that, it's just all about, do I have confidence? Am I comfortable around the animal? And do I really love this? Like, is, am I smiling? <laughs> it's all about that showmanship when you're showing an animal for livestock or horses. So again, if you have a rabbit at home, this is how you start. You make makeshift obstacle courses for your animals to learn how to go around and start learning how to use treats if they, if they are um, food motivated. My dog is not food motivated, my dog is pet motivated. He likes cuddles. Mm -hmm. And there we go. See, this is a part, this can be either, you know, go in the dog project or it can be a pet project where you can create a trifold or a poster on all about my dog. Mm -hmm. And just to let everyone know, this May and June, myself and some other colleagues from Ramsey County and Sherburne County are opening this up for everyone to do Wiggle Wednesdays with us. It'll be 15 minutes of wiggles, and it doesn't have to be just clover buds. It can be anyone from ages 5 and all the way to 19. But just let them know, it'll be very simple exercises, and it's only for 15 minutes long, and we're going to make sure that it's quality learning where we're going to focus on different aspects of your body. So the first session is, I'm hosting it, the first one, and we're going to focus on your heart and how the sound of music really affects your heart as you're going through motions and being able to reflect and do some sort of breathing exercises at the end to help your little ones get those wiggles out for at least once a week. And they'll be consistently on Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 10 15. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, has Evelyn jumped on yet? Nope. All right. That's okay. Well, if she comes back on, um, we'll loop her in. But Sarissa, we wondered if you would be willing to maybe answer a couple questions about, um, yeah, phase experience as well as um, just, yeah, your time as a club leader with a sp specific emphasis on cloverbud learning. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to. So um, I first was... I first became involved in 4-H um, in junior high 
back in Montana. Um, and then my love for that kind of carried on here to the cities. And when my oldest, who is now nine, uh, became a kindergartner, we started looking into groups. And 4-H kind of just kept sticking out because she was interested in so many different um, aspects of learning from chickens to gardening to sewing. Um, it was a huge broadband and I just thought 4-H would be an, a great opportunity, especially um, in an urban setting to kind of get other younger families involved as well. Um, so our daughter has for, showed three projects at the, she's currently on the other side of the house right now, but um, she did a sewing project last year and she participated in fashion review. Um, so she showed her dress at the county level and then over at the Ramsey County Fair for the fashion review, uh, she did a trifold on her chickens that she took and invested in. So on the trifold, she documented the first, I think, two weeks of their life. And it's slipping me what her third project was that she took last year. <laughs> I'm a horrible, horrible mother for it was a Ah, it was a pillow, yes. Thanks, Sorry. <laughs> she took a, well, yeah. <laughs> See, he's listening. Um, she repurposed a t shirt, a Girl Scout t shirt, and she attached the badges to the other side of the t-shirt and she made it Aww. so um she had a lot of fun so she learned the basics of hand stitching and the machine stitching um and then for how did we prepare her for the judging um it was just kind of walking her through what kind of questions they would ask um and we'd sit down and we kind of go over them Right now we're doing the same for our entire Cloverbud group and the kids have kind of picked and chosen what their area of interest is. And so far everyone in our group has presented and they bring their projects forward, their whole completed project, and they do their presentation and then the kids kind of ask them questions about their project. And I think that's a great opportunity for the kids to bring them into the group setting around peers that they know, they trust, they feel comfortable around, and then they just, they open up so well. And even a few of our members who um, are kind of shy, they, they love talking about their projects because again, for Clover Buds, it's all about what they are interested in and making sure that they are working on a project that they are invested in that really holds their attention. Um, so it's been a great opportunity to see quite a few of those students open up and the amount of energy and um, the learning that they take from each project. Awesome. Thanks, Sarissa. And just to let everyone know, Fashion Review is for both, for all genders. It's just whoever, who, and who, Whoever wants to sew and show off their pieces and walk down a runway, they are welcome to. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so just to wrap up, we wanted to let you know we have a variety of resources um, t for you as you start um, thinking about projects you want to continue doing um, during the school year and beyond the school year during the summer. Um, Section 7 is um, part of our premium book which is basically the like annual project guide um, for our county of what's available to show in our county fair. Um, project learning hot sheets are a really great resource from Iowa 4-H that really lays out every single um, individual project area and really maps out from a like beginner level to all the way an advanced level of how to expand your learning and like what Catherine said it's not just about planting a seed it's and watching it grow it's about um, adding aspects of communications, um, like how are you speak, how are you um, demonstrating your learning about this to others? How are you um, making this a a valued resource in your community? How are you sharing this and being a good citizen? So um, there are just so many great layers to to learning. 
We also have an awesome 4-H um, online store, Shop 4-H, where you can purchase curricula and kits. Um, our Hennepin 4-H office can certainly help with any costs as well, so just let us know. Um, myself and Catherine, club leaders, as well as our youth leaders are, of course, available to help, um, just help you brainstorm and think about what to do. And otherwise, we are happy to field your questions. Feel free to unmute um, and chime in or throw them in a chat box and we're happy to just continue the conversation of, of other questions you have of, of what it means to get your Culver Bud started in project learning. When we are all done and we're allowed to go back to our offices and you want curriculum books, feel free to come to our office. We'll give it to you. We don't want it back. Just we have it. so many. We have so many. Take it from us. Take it all. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Oh, I, there's a good general question that I get asked a lot in the meetings. And is there a certain amount of projects that um, kids are allowed to bring to the fair? Um, max, I think I just put this on Cloverbud because there wasn't a max for that age group. I, we said 10. So you can do up to 10. And honestly, we could, we would welcome more that if you've got awesome things to show and share, there's never, um, yeah, to be able to have those judging experiences is really important to us and their, their development too. What we else, Catherine? Had, we also haven't had that many kids bring mm -hmm up to 10. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah, especially I, I'm curious too with our county fair being pushed later, having um, having it previously been so early in the summer, I'm anxious and like hopeful that just this time and this circumstance will just help kids get busy and explore and learn and you have fun. You can do a project on slime. You can build something from a Lego. Mm -hmm. Bring it. Yeah. Yeah. Fairy gardens are popular among clover buds, Lego projects. Um, slime garden. was popular last year. Slime, garden, yeah. Mm -hmm. All awesome. You can grow flowers and rearrange them in a vase. That's a project. <laughs> Flower arrangement is a project. <laughs> nice. Um, let's see. Leah asked... Um, how do you find a group to join once we have a project selected? Um, sure. So to, if you're um, just getting started in 4-H, we can connect you to um, like a nearby club, whether it's geographically close to um, your area. Um, and it should be noted too, it doesn't matter if you live in Hennepin County or live in any other county, you can be a part of any 4-H program and more than one club. So we can get you connected. Um, I think the other... Uh, yeah, first we usually ask you where you live to help you geographically. Second question we ask is, what's your, ki what's your kiddo interested in? Because if they're um, passionate about rabbits, maybe we should just get you right on, um, right on board with the Hennepin Hoppers who meet um, um, usually monthly that we can get them started. Uh and then but the other the other addition is like there's some for like animal project focused clubs maybe you also want to do more of the project based club like uh the community based clubs where you're allowed you're welcome to bring in your projects and do a showcase and do different community service projects besides just focusing on the animal all the time so that's where we have different kids who are part of the clover patch kids or of west side forage but they're also part of the horse project club because the club really does talk all about horses. They do horse games. No one really brings in their project to show off or do show and tell. Whereas like their general clubs will do that. And they do welcome that. And they'll do different segments every month, every club meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, the second part of your question was how do you find out about showing? Um, so at least if I interpret that right, if that's like fairs and other things, that's really through our like email communications on our website, on our social media, um, with all the information on dates and times, as well as the project areas listed. So at this time, our Hennepin County Fair is currently postponed. We're hoping to announce the new date by or before May 15th, when we know a, a bit more from the governor's office and through the university. Um, we're at least hoping for like late July, August uh, weekend date. Um, that's our hope. 
And yeah, you just find out about that through our office. Stay in touch with us if you have more questions. Um, and we hope also to push out other just how-to videos when it comes to like project, project registration. We have an online system for that as well as like enrollment, um, all that, all those kind of required pieces to get you through those initial hoops. So any other questions we can answer for you all? Sarah and Avery, are you excited? Okay. <laughs> Our youngest audience members. <laughs> They're just doing this all I'm like. I know. I'm interested in what they or your your kiddos are learning about at home, outside of school. So, Amy and Catherine, I actually do yeah. have a random question that I just thought of. Please. Um, so, my son Max has been studying geology, um, and he really got into it because of Minecraft. Sweet. Um, which I thought was hilarious, but um, I was curious if there's any like copyright issues if you were to mention Minecraft or like I don't. I mean, it's I feel like probably not, but I don't know. I don't think so. Um, okay. I, think, I don't think I don't think publishing and all that stuff really comes into play unless you're selling the work. Right. Okay. That so makes if you're showing it for your own development. At a yeah. small scales county fair and then state fair, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I figured not, and I don't even know that he'll bring it actually into the project, but I was just curious. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all. Yeah, mine, cool. yep, and Minecraft too has been a, I know um, Andrew had a Minecraft project a couple of years ago. I forget what he did though. Yeah. It was all about Minecraft. Cool, geology. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, he loves it. We're actually, um, on Friday, we're learning from a park ranger about local geology which is kind of cool oh very Perfect. cool just individually no it's like a virtual web, uh, web series they're doing awesome cool. that's great i love to hear that yeah and this is a really f interesting time too that so many experts are just at our our fingertips too so take advantage of of all those places and people who are eager to tell you more about what they do and how they yeah, do it. I think it's another meet a NASA engineer next week or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a statewide 4-H like meet a NASA engineer. So you can, um, it's like a webinar series and they, I think it's Q&A mm -hmm. and they get to tell you about what they do and how they became an engineer and what they yep. do. It's really cool. So, well, great. Well, Thanks all for um, joining. Please, um, you'll hear from me um, just with a short eval um, tonight or tomorrow morning. But um, no, Catherine and I are um, eager and willing to help you, and I'm sure Sarissa as well. If I can throw you in that pot, we're excited to we're excited to have you in our program and get your clover bud on their way. So, thanks for spending your evening thanks with us. Enough. Amy, I know you have older kids too, ages 8 and 11. All of these participation and encouragement definitely applies to them. Oh, yes. And more so. If anything, they're just in more of the competitive range now for red, blues, and Absolutely. Red. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. All right, everyone. You all have a wonderful night. Have a good rest of your week. There should be more sunshine on the way. Please take advantage of it and stay safe. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.